Hello, and welcome to Connecting Tucson with Jamie Overturf, broadcasting from the Tucson Business Channel, a division of Mark Bishop Media, situated in the Stewart Title Corporate Offices on Broadway in Tucson, Arizona. Connecting Tucson is all about connecting our community, local businesses, and organizations to help our community grow and thrive. Today, we are talking with Daniela Diamante, the Executive Director of the Beyond Foundation. Daniela believes in the capacity of all people, especially youth, to be healthy, engaged, and good people. Originally from Indiana, not holding that against her, she has a master's in culture uh, anthropology from the University of Arizona with a focus of youth development and education. She has over 20 years experience in nonprofit leadership in Tucson and is the owner and co-director of Tucson CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. I did not say that right. As well as an adjunct instructor of Pilates at the UA, in addition to being the executive director of Beyond Foundation. Where do you find the time to sleep (laughs) is my question. Anyways, thank you so very much for coming on today to uh, Connecting Tucson and sharing about the Beyond Foundation. I'm super excited. So why don't we just jump right in and let's start off by letting our listeners know a little bit about you and your background. Great. Thanks for having me. Um, So, yeah, originally from Indiana. I'm sorry if that offends anyone. (laughs) Illinois Uh, (laughs) here, so no no offense. I think we're all a big melting pot. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And like many people in Tucson, I came for school thinking that I was going to be in and out and fell in love with Tucson. So um, I'm now going on 19 years being here in Tucson. So I definitely call Tucson home. have traveled um, quite a bit um, in between Indiana and graduate school here. I lived in, in Central America for a couple of years. Wow. And worked and did a bunch of different project stuff there. But um, I love Tucson. I absolutely oh, love Tucson. Absolutely. I didn't come here for work. I came here for parents. But I do find that once people come here, people are always uh, assume that the desert brown and just absolutely dingy and it's yeah. not brown it's still a lot of color and things that are out there and the mountains just are gorgeous to to wake up to so agreed agreed what got you interested in nonprofits and volunteering specifically so it's kind of just been in my blood i think um helping out in the community doing stuff it was part of my growing up um and the way my parents kind of operated i mean they're working class you know uh individuals but always were giving back through the church or doing other things and um, my father coached my soccer team growing up and I the way that he always took other kids in and you know there were always kids other kids around right um, that couldn't afford it but it was never really talked about it just in my adult life I started to realize that um, and uh, so I originally came in thinking again I was gonna come to graduate school and then get going but uh, I came in and worked at the Bureau for Applied Research and Anthropology. So really about how do we take the knowledge that we're gaining and apply it back into the community. So okay. helping the community realize where they need to make improvements and helping them decide and make those improvements. So um, that's always been my passion. And, um, and then working with young people. And so when I first came in, I actually landed um, at Bikus, which is a nonprofit education and recycling center for bicycles ah, in Tucson. I and remember reading that. Helped develop the education program there and got some funding in through writing grants and so forth. And that's where uh, I met my husband um, and also where I fell in love with bicycles and working with kids and bikes. And I think the bicycle is just a cool tool to help people understand who they are and what they're capable of and to get from point A to B. And I love to use it to travel and see the world and get to move your body. So um, I think the bicycle is an amazing, amazing tool. And um, especially with kids, it's been a really fun thing and central to my to my time in Tucson. So from there, my husband and I developed um, El Grupo Youth Cycling, which is a nonprofit that is um, very successful and still going in Tucson, um, works with hundreds of kids annually, programs after school, in schools, through the summer, really cool stuff. And um, I still volunteer, but I stepped down as executive director a few years ago. Okay. Um, and then, um, you know, over the years, I helped start the first two um, Seclovia Tucson events. So closing down the streets and open them up to people. Again, riding bikes, but walking and skating and just right. realizing that we're part of the community, not just cars on the streets. So um, 
community has been central to to what I do and also getting people, young people especially, active and outside. I 100% agree with the bike bicycle. Um, I also think even for the older generation, they're kind of scared. There's some bikes out there that can actually help them get out, get active without having to do all the work, like the e-cycles, where yeah. it's like half and half. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I just found out about that. So yeah. <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing out there. Um, but yeah, I think it's a Pedego that's up there. Mm-hmm. Um, they're great, great uh, bicycle uh, company. So you you have mentioned that uh, bicycles can help find out who you are. What does that mean? Yeah. So uh, I think especially with young people, it's we we think we have limitations. Ah. We think, you know, we think that we're only capable of certain things. And I think using the bicycle, you realize that as simple as I can do it or I can get from here to my friend's house or to school – uh, to more advanced of like, I didn't know I could get up that mountain or that I could set this goal and see it through. And so um, I've over the years really, really enjoyed helping young people in particular find their strength, uh, their inner strength through the bicycle. Oh, that is that's amazing. All right. So how how did you get involved with the Beyond Foundation? Yeah. So um, I mentioned that I'd stepped down from El Grupo. So in 2019, uh, my husband and I had had a, a very long term goal of taking a year long sabbatical um, is kind of what we called it. But um, we uh, went and rode bikes with our 10 year old son in all over Europe oh my for six months. So we had now I'm tw- jealous. 25 countries in six months so we got around and then um, and then transported ourselves got over to South America and it was gonna be another six months ended in Colombia in March 2020 and everything changed so oh, yes we caught one of the last flights out of Colombia at the time and had to evacuate so um, when I came back from that and then got settled and was like okay not the best time to start a new career mm-hmm. um, but um, one of the board members uh, and also a great business person in the community, Damien Alexander, um, he uh, was had his kid grow up through El Grupo. And he was on the board, and the board was looking for like their first executive director past their founder, basically. The, found, the founding executive director was given, Michelle Crow was given this opportunity to go full time at, at her other job. And they were kind of like, what do we do? Who do we, you know? <laughs> Who do we look to? And so Damien reached out and said, I think this would be perfect. And, you know, you just read the mission statement and what Beyond is about, about health and wellness. And you go, yeah, this is a great fit. So initially I came in as an interim thinking it might just be a temporary thing um, or might just help them transition in some way. And right away I realized like this is a this is a perfect fit. Oh, wonderful. So why don't we tell our listeners what is the Beyond Foundation and your mission? Yeah. So Beyond it has a, a mission of um, of health and wellness in the community. Right. And likes to use um science and health science to help people understand the why. Like, yes, we know, oh, we should exercise, but like why and how and, you know, what's it for? I think if people understand the why behind things, there's more chance for positive behavioral change. And that's really what we're looking for is how do we help the community as a whole um, and individuals in particular live healthier lives? And we take this holistic approach to it. So Um, It's not just moving your body. It's not just eating well. It's those and connecting with nature and connecting with other people. So we call them the four pillars, but it's this holistic approach to how we can um, help people understand that it's all of those pieces of the puzzle. Okay. And um, what are those four pillars? Yeah, so move, explore, nourish, and connect. And so um, the work that Beyond was doing, um, it started, Beyond actually started because of a tragedy. I don't know if uh, folks know that, but um, the shootings in 20. 20- 11 um, that involve Senator Gabriel Giffords and Gabe Zimmerman, among a number of other community members, um, was the impetus for saying, how do we be healthier as a community? And so initially it was an event, an annual event as a sort of a commemorative, but looking beyond the beyond, tragedy, yeah. yeah, where the name came from. And, uh, and then it was like, well, there's more here. There's more work to be done. And that's when it became its own nonprofit. And so there's been work in getting people out walking, hiking, that maybe don't normally do that, doing other things. And so when I came on, one of the first things we did is looked at um, a program that um, needed a home right at the 
perfect time, and that was Meet Me at Maynard's and Meet Me Wednesday. And so now that we're the parent organization for this long um, – lived and loved uh, event that happens every Monday downtown and every Wednesday at St. Phillips. Yep, no matter wind, rain, shine, snow, <laughs> sleet, they they go through everything except for I think when there's lightning is when they yeah, actually call yeah, it off. We have to have yeah, 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 some safety. standards, yeah, right? Some safety standards. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how the connection with Meet Me at Maynard's actually came about? Yeah, so uh, Julia Strange, also amazing community member and board member uh, um, at TMC, um, had been a long Longtime supporter of Meet Me and is also on the board of directors of yeah. Beyond, and so um, you know she she said it. And at first, we weren't quite sure, and then it was like I don't know why we ever questioned the the connection there. So we got some support to figure out what that merger looked like and um, make it all happen. And so we're just past a year now that um, we've been the the permanent home. Excellent. And what other work does Beyond do in the community? Yeah, so um, I mentioned the hiking, and Mm -hmm. that had been something that Beyond had been doing in the past. And so we've kept that up with a monthly hike um, targeting beginners. So folks that maybe have never been on their first hike before, and they're a little intimidated, and so how you can go in a supportive environment. So we keep them, um, we have three different levels of hikes that we explain on our website, and how you can, you know, be be safe and know which level you're ready for. Um, And, you know, a something under three miles, not a lot of elevation gain might be your level one beginner and taking breaks and just a supportive environment that helps them kind of explore areas and hopefully do it more. So um, we try to do that the first Saturday of every month. And in June, we'll be up on Mount Lemmon, of course, because it gets a little yes, warm here in the valley. Say, hiking in Tucson. Yeah. <laughs> Must be up somewhere high hopefully. country. <laughs> Mount Lemmon, go somewhere higher. Yeah. 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 And so that's something that I've continued. And then a newer program that I started in this last year um, comes back to my roots and the kids and the bikes and looking at when we look at the community and who who was missing from that equation. Like we do a lot of adult work and families through the meet me stuff and the hikes, but really focusing on young people. Um, I've started a Beyond Bikes program in two different schools, Imago Day Middle School and Changemaker High School, both schools that have um, a, a flexible curriculum, let's say, where they are open to innovative ways of engaging youth and um, also engage a diverse population of youth that maybe don't have access to bicycles or to nature or to getting outside and moving their bodies. So it's been a really, really successful project so far. Excellent. Excellent. And um, I guess that obviously takes some money. How can the community help or what are some things that you might be looking for from the community to assist for this nonprofit? Yeah, absolutely. Like any nonprofit. Yeah. um, Money helps (laughs) us do more. So um, through Meet Me, uh, we're always looking for other corporate sponsors. Uh, We have an amazing... um, Amazing avenues for getting your name out, as as you know, right? Yes. So um, full disclosure, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. you know you can be present at the event and talk to people yourselves, hundreds every week. Um, we mention your name every week. We've got T-shirts and banners and all kinds of things that your logo then gets to be on and in front of, you know, this very engaged audience. Absolutely. Um, and um, as far as the, the hiking and the biking stuff, you know, individual and foundation support is what helps us keep that all moving. So always looking for support. And it could be, hey, here's $10 to help get snacks for the kids on the bike ride to, hey, we want to help you get, you know, some equipment at the school so that we can continue doing what we do. Anything and everything can help. Yeah. And I know these events. Um, these events, uh, you don't charge anything for the community to come out and do anything. Nope. Everything we do is free. Yes. And who can participate? Anybody. So we want all walks of life. We want everybody. So we try to be super inclusive um, and uh you know, encourage folks by having it at downtown. You can use the bus system to get to us pretty easily. You know, I think it's important that we um, we take down the barriers that we that exist in, in the community for moving your body. You don't have to look a certain way. You don't have to, you know, yes. act a certain way. And you don't have to walk any certain distance. So it's not a contest, you know, especially with our Meet Me events. 
come, you check in. Um, if you first time or you want support, you can do one of our guided walks, even check out some murals in the downtown area. So very leisure. Um, some folks come down and they run a 5k every Monday, you know, so it's really, yeah, up- that's beyond my scope. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so some people come down and they're walking there and they're meeting up with friends and they're having a beer, but they're getting out of the house and they're right. connecting with other people. And that's, what's important. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Super interesting. If you're just tuning in, you're listening to Connecting Tucson with Jamie, where we focus on connecting our community, local businesses, and organizations to help our community grow and thrive. As your local insurance professional for all of your insurance needs, I know how important it is to make a new and lasting connection right here in our own community. You never know how our connection is going to create a spark or pull you in a unique direction. If you're a small business owner or involved in a community project or a nonprofit and would like to be featured on the show, please feel free to give me a call. All of my information is on the Tucson Business Channel. Just click on Connecting Tucson with Jamie. I would love to hear from you. Right now, we are talking with Daniela Diamante, the Executive Director of the Beyond Foundation, and I have to uh, basically say I did not realize everything that the Beyond Foundation did, especially with kids. Um, and I know you, you're not just about getting out, you're also about what you take into your body. Why is nutrition such an important aspect for the Beyond Foundation? Absolutely. I mean, it's been central. It's one of those four pillars. And I think, you know, we um, want to bring more awareness, especially with young people, into how what they put in their body affects how their body feels, how their mind feels. I mean, you look at the news these days, there's so much talk about mental health, um, especially around young people, and it's a huge concern. And so how can we do every little thing, you know, that that supports a healthy environment for a young person? And so it's engaging with them, it's connecting with them. It's also teaching them that maybe all that sugar they're putting in is not helping them feel calm in class or the ups and downs that they have. Um, so one of the classes I did recently over at Imago Day is working with our garden teacher. We did a lesson on like how to read nutrition labels. And, you know, it was yes. it was so fun. We did the scavenger hunt of like, you know, find something that has more than 10 grams of added sugar. Find something that has more than five grams of fiber. Right. And we talked about the different nutrients and elements. And um, it was wonderful to see these young people, you know, go, oh, my gosh, I can't even pronounce this. I'm not I'm never eating this again. You know, and it's amazing with all the preservatives lately that are in food. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I think it's just helping them understand that they do have choices um, and how how to make those choices. I mean, at a young age, I wish I had classes like that, you know, to understand that um, maybe eating jello for lunch every day is not a good idea. <laughs> I remember I went through high school and the only thing I'd eat in high school would be mozzarella sticks for lunch. Yeah. And I now know that's probably not the healthiest way to go for it, but it was also quick, cheap, and I yeah. Yeah. Probably not the best. Yeah. But I do think that that is very important. Children these days learn life skills. That to me is a yeah. life skill. And exactly. it's not like we're really teaching a bunch of that in school. Nutrition is one thing that's going to live with you for the rest of your life, along with finances and being able to do that stuff. Yep. So I absolutely love that pillar. Um, and you're only in those two schools. Do you ever do any outside classes for children to come in and talk nutrition or is it just within those schools? Right now, it's still developing that. So that is a newer element to what we're doing. So I've, I've Basically, this last year, I've been piloting with these schools. We have great success rate with the response. I mean, when a principal comes up to me and says, man, I thought kids were going to want to skip out. But kids are have better attendance when you're coming and riding bikes and doing stuff with them. So, like, this is great. So, especially with the high schoolers, right? Yeah. So, um, definitely continuing in those two schools. And then we'll slowly start to look at adding other schools. So, if there's a school anymore. out there that is excited about these ideas, I'd love to I'd love to talk to you. Absolutely. And I'm sh- I don't know why they wouldn't. I mean, this is a great program. Yeah. Um, how can more people benefit from what Beyond has to offer? Well, definitely come out and join us. So our biggest um, like visibility uh, throughout the year is in that, that annual event. And the second week in January, this last right. year, we had over a dozen different events happen all over town from, you know, uh, hiking and running out in the desert to an event at a school, just all kinds of different stuff. Um, but weekly, it's meet, through Meet Me at Maynard's and Meet Me Wednesday. I mean, we're free. We meet at a place where you can go have dinner and you get discounts then at different places there. Um, you win prizes. There's raffle prizes every night. There's incentives. Exactly. Um, so there's a lot of return on investment for just getting you out and meeting new people and moving. And the other thing, too, is you actually have the virtual platform where if you can't physically make it, but 
once you go out, you can check yourself in to say, yeah. yes, I walked. And you get points for that. And yeah. that's that's amazing. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that was something that really kept us going and kept a lot of people going. We got a lot of feedback during the last couple of years of the pandemic. Right. Of saying that, like, kept me going of like, all right, I can still get out and walk. And then it counts for something. Exactly. Yeah. And all of the pictures that flooded social media over those two years, mm-hmm. getting out and getting active, get out, get active. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you're with Meet Me at Maynard's, you know what that's about. <laughs> um, if not, come check them out because they are fabulous. Um, how can people support the work you're doing in the schools? What are some options or things that we can do to help? Again, coming back to um, financial support. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was able to get secure grants and get bicycles at both of those two schools. So that's really exciting. But we need to set up little tool stands and, um, you know, have water bottles and extra things that like just help it function um, that directly benefit the kids. And so those things all cost money. So right now I'm looking for funding to help um, to cover some of those expenses Um, and then doing trips. I was also take kids out on hikes for their very first hike. And so, you know, transportation to get them out there, lunch, healthy lunches, that sort of stuff. Um, the funding that we need is really the stuff that will directly support the kids involved. Um, so know that that donation is going into helping a kid make better choices and learn how to have, like you said, life skills for, for living a healthier life. Absolutely. It's so many times, like you, all of the ads that you're seeing on TV are like for these sugared, like, I don't know. I, 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 if. Yeah. No, kids are getting inundated with it. Another lesson that we do is is about that, like ads and how to how to break them down to realize what they're trying to sell you. Yes. Right. Exactly. And, uh, it's not good for you. And it's always, <laughs> always sugar, sugar, sugar. Everything seems to have so much sugar in there. Yeah. I actually I remember this one time, you know, I, I had my son and he was wanting um Reese's peanut butter cup or something Mm -hmm. and I'm like let's break down and see how much sugar is actually in there and when we came down I mean it filled up almost a half a cup of granulated sugar when it came down to and he's just like whoa oh like that's how much sugar you're actually putting in your body it doesn't look like it because it's all mixed together yeah but yeah I mean sugar in itself is not bad in moderation everything is decent exactly and that's and that's why talking to the kids about understanding it's not you know, no one's going on a diet here. No one's, no. you know, but it's learning how to understand what's in your food. To fuel your body. And not to fuel just, your body, exactly. Because if you're just, riding bikes yeah. out, out, you know, and just, you need you need fuel. So, like, what's good fuel versus bad fuel? And when maybe, when's a good time to have that? And maybe when's not the best time to have that? You exactly. Know, that you're not going to eat a whole plate full of pasta right before you go to bed. That yeah. would just be bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what are you most excited about for uh, Beyond Future? I think, you know, continuing to develop the programs with the youth. And then what I love to see is that we're engaging those families and they're coming out to the Meet Me events or coming out on hikes. And so I think we've started with developing, you know, or growing our community of people that we work with um, and diversifying it. And I and I look forward to continuing to do that, um, you know, to have young people, old people, people from all socioeconomic backgrounds, all races, all ethnicities. I want everyone to feel um, welcome and creating a space so we can do that. Yeah, and every Monday, I mean, you would be surprised. It's a very vast uh, array of different types of walkers from young kids to dogs mm-hmm. to older generations. They're all still out there. And with Meet Me, it's not just one route schedule. You actually have a couple of different routes that they can take. Can you yeah. explain that? So, so people that might feel a little bit intimidated about getting out and walking for the first time? Absolutely. We have everything from like a one mile route to, like I said, a 5K route that you can go out and do. Um, and so we've got you know instructions on like where to go so you don't feel lost and people that will join you as well. But um, it's definitely at your own at your own pace, at your own comfort level, so that um, maybe you're coming out and initially you're doing the one mile, and then you know months later you feel like, hey, I'm going to move to two miles and um, get that walk in before you come back and celebrate with everybody. Right, and you do have maps, so you you and you also give uh, advice on where to walk and where to go, but you have veterans that will walk with you. Yeah, so yeah, so we have veterans that will walk with you. We have veterans that will show you all the cool spots in downtown. You know, Which there's a lot of them. Yeah, but they are. yeah, yes. a lot of really beautiful murals. Um, speaking of events and things, I'm looking forward to we did this event last year for the first time and it was such a hit can't wait to bring it back the u of a um fox school of music 
partnered with Meet Me at Maynard's, and we had um, quartets and quintets and even a choir all stationed at murals around on our our route. Yeah, the mural walk. Yes. Yeah, in in the downtown area, we had hundreds and hundreds. We think we estimated around seven hundred people came out for that. Wow! So it was, was so beautiful. Large event. Yes. Right. So you walk around, and then you have this beautiful piece of music being played, and then you walk on to the next. And um, so we looked forward to more collaborations like that and other creative ideas. Excellent, excellent. So you you uh, talked about an event in the past, and I know you guys do your monthly hiking. Um, do you have any events that are coming up? Yeah, so we are we're actually a, a, a beneficiary, but we're helping out um, actively this year with Run Tucson um, puts on um, TMC's. Uh, Meet Me Downtown, uh, 5K, and it's a, a run walk in the downtown area on June 4th, Saturday, mm-hmm. in the evening. Um, there right. is a fee for that. Um, you get medals like that, unless you're a kid. And then Southern Arizona Roadrunners has a free one-mile Fit Kids run. And so any kid can participate mm-hmm. and run, and we'll be there handing out T-shirts and medals and all kinds of stuff and helping out with that. But um, oh, that's fun. It's a great event. Again, getting families out in downtown in June where you're like, oh, it's hot, but then you run at 6.30 or something like that at night, and it's it's beautiful out. Yes, it's it's a little bit cooler in the evening, yeah. um, so that's good. At least it's much better than trying to do it at 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the fee for that one? Is there still spots open? Are you going to max that out at a certain limb if it hits it? Um, there, I, It's not maxed out to the best of my knowledge. Um, there's still room. Uh, the fee, I don't know the exact fee schedule, okay. but I do know that if you sign up as uh, part of the Meet Me or Beyond team, and all you have to put in, in that, you don't have to do anything else special, you get $5 off. So you get a discount if you hear this and you say you're part of Meet Me or Beyond. Um, we'd love to have you out there. Let's all go out and do a 5K. Whooped. That's a Saturday, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So it's like, yeah, that's a Saturday. So Saturday, June 4th. Yeah. All right. Exciting. Looking forward to that one. What do you like best about the Beyond Foundation and what you do? Uh, I like... Uh, I like being able to share my own like values and learn things that I've learned over life in my life so far about how to be healthy. Um, but I also love all that I learn from all the people around me. You know, um, yes. there's you know the 83 year old that's come in to meet me and has been coming for the last 14 years, and you're like, wow, like. I can learn so much from you and that dedication and how important it is to continue to connect with other people. Um, To the young kid who's, you know, discovering their body and, you know, their heartbeat, you know, on a bike ride and, uh, and uh, everything, you know, about nutrition for the first time. I, I, I love all of that too. Oh, that's wonderful. So we're coming to the end. Is there anything that we have not covered that you want to make sure that the listeners know? Just that we'd love to see you. I think, um, you know, whether that's coming to one of our events, whether that's becoming a sponsor and we see your logo everywhere um, or supporting it in some way, we'd love to have you engaged. Let's talk about that sponsorship here real quick because I know I'm a sponsor and Mm -hmm. I'm very much engaged with uh, Meet Me at Maynard's and the Beyond Foundation. How can you become a sponsor and what are some different level of sponsorships if a business is interested in partnering? Yeah, we're always looking for raffle prizes. So it could be as simple as a $10 to $25 gift card to your business that gets people in the door, Mm -hmm. right? So we're always looking for raffle prizes. Um, We give those out every Monday and Wednesday. People love them. We've got good um, sort of return on investment there. A lot of people hearing about it and then using those. And then um, sponsorship levels begin at $1,500 and go up from there in terms of where your logo gets seen. Um, You can also just come out and table and we've got uh, like a sponsorship level for that. And by table, you know what that is. Uh You get to chat with a bunch of people, you know, and we don't have a lot of people tabling all the time. So it's not like you're competing per se, you really have a captivated audience that are like, cool, I'd love to learn more about what you do and what you offer. Exactly. And I can honestly say that, yes, that does absolutely happen. Um, As far as uh, the events on the Monday walk and the Wednesday walk, where are they respectively? Monday walk is at um, Hotel Congress. So we're in the the courtyard patio of Hotel Congress, even though it's called Mimi Maynard's. We've hung on to the name, but um, geographically. It's catchy. Yeah, it is. And um, 
not going to change it now. We have too many t-shirts out there. Yeah, I was going to say, there's <laughs> way too many t-shirts out there for the Meet Me at Maynard's crowd. But yep. um, I'm so sad that that's not, I mean, it was it's good. But the Hotel Congress has a great venue as it's well. It's a great venue. We always have a band playing. We have the bartenders open. we got food available. Um, and then you've got the downtown area to explore in terms of other restaurants that are open and you get yes. discounts. Absolutely. And then Wednesday is at St. Philip's Plaza. Mm-hmm. So River and Campbell, and we meet in that courtyard there, but everyone goes out and walks on the loop. So it's kind of nice because you got a little bit more nature than downtown, Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you can, again, do a full loop um, around the the circuit we have, or you can do an out and back, so you can really regulate how far you want to go. So again, different types of walk styles that are out there, and it's still the same crowd. Anybody and uh, everybody is welcome. Absolutely. And the Mondays and Wednesdays, there's no charge. You just go in. You just go in. Sign up. Yep. And if you haven't signed up or registered, you'll want to do that there so you can get your cool t-shirts if yep. it's your first time. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, absolutely. So, um, and your monthly hike, where is that coming up for June? And it, uh, also June 4th, but in the morning because <laughs> it's the first Saturday. It's a busy, it's a busy Saturday. Is it always the first Saturdays? We try to keep it the first Saturday and um, we're going to be up at Mount Lemon, um, in the oh, I don't want to say the wrong place. It's all up, uh, all up on our website. But um, yeah, the near the Marsh Gulch area. But we're keeping it again. I think it's a level two hike, so a little bit more than just very very beginner, but nothing advanced. Um, and we try to adjust. We always have multiple hike leaders that are experienced that have extra water and snacks and that sort of stuff. So um, it's a very supportive environment. All right, actually. Um there is one question I did forget to ask. You had circled back to bikes when we were doing that. Why are bikes so important to teach children about their health? They, um, you know, as expensive as bikes are these days, they're really still one of the most accessible things in terms of, um, you know, it's a life skill that you can use in all these different ways, right? That I'm, I'm teaching middle school and high school kids how to ride for the first time a lot in schools. A lot in of schools. children don't have access to that yeah. when they were growing up. So, so um, it creates that body awareness. It creates spatial awareness. Um, balance. You, balance, right? All kinds, of, all kinds of those sort of skills. But also, like I said, um, learning how to set goals. Learning how to... Um, you know, go, gosh, I don't think I can do that and then do it and know that you're more capable than you thought. And I just see the bicycle as just such a beautiful way to do that. Um, you also get to see a lot more than you're, than walking. You exactly. know, you get, you get farther. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, that was my main point of transportation. I didn't, I, I didn't get a car when I was 16, but still it was, you're being able to go over to someone's house I remember biking five miles to go see a friend yeah and that was my way of getting there of course days have changed at this point but still at the same point very or you know ergonomical yeah um and everything that's yeah. that way all right well is there anything else Daniela just thank you I think it's great to have uh, the opportunity to do this to uh, have you know people more people know about beyond in general and about our meet me events in, in particular it's great to have you out at those events um and uh yeah I would love to see more people and more Excellent. Support. So um, if someone were to show up on Mondays and Wednesdays, what times should they show up? Showing up around 5, um, between 5 and 5.30 as uh, check-in. You go out for your walk roughly about an hour because the awards then are at 6.30. So um, it's still it's a quick, quick event, but it's still a lot of engagement. So come meet people, check in, go out on your walk, come back, uh, win some raffle prizes from have local businesses, eat. have a have something to eat, have something to drink, uh, and then go on the re- with the rest of your evening. It's not a very long event, but it is a very impactful and fun event to get out there and get engaged. I yeah. highly recommend it. So if you have time, schedule it in your Mondays and Wednesdays after work, get that workout in and head on over. How can people... Um, reach out to become a sponsor what's the best way best way would be email me um and any of our contact my contact information is all on our website so all the information we talked about everything is on beyond-tucson.org um yeah reach out and i'd be more than happy to chat with you about it all right and don't worry if you didn't get that um uh, website. It will all be up on Connecting Tucson along with all of the links so you can get there directly. Take a look at it. Check them out. Come out, get active, have fun, get engaged with your local community. I'm looking forward to uh, heading there on Monday. Again, thank you, Daniela, for coming on the show. I 
sure learned a lot today. I didn't realize everything that the Beyond Foundation did. Um, that is all for connecting uh, Tucson with Jamie here at the Stuart Title Studios. If you like the show, please let us know. You can connect with us or go on to the Tucson Business Channel, which is a division of the Mark Bishop Media. Uh, you can connect through the Beyond Foundation through the links that will be there as well. As always, do not be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and make a new connection. You never know where it's going to lead. Until next time, Tucson, this is Jamie Overturf with Farmers Insurance. Keep on making that unique connection.